The Awakening, the revised edition by Lilac Me. Chapter 19, A Fated Meeting. Luke sped through the endless sands of the Tatooine and towards the Jundland Wastes, a part of Tatooine he was not supposed to be in under any circumstances. The little asteroid had managed to get very far overnight. I'm picking up a signal on the scanner. It might be our little R2 unit, Luke told 3PO as he pressed down on the throttle, heading off in the direction that the scanner was indicating. Nearby, sand people spotted Luke and quickly hopped on their panthers. Luke stopped the speeder as they cornered R2. Hey, just where do you think you're going? Luke asked. R2 spotted on about something with an urgent series of shrill whirls and clicks. Master Luke is your rightful owner now. There will be no more of this Obi-Wan Kenobi business. 3PO scolded. Suddenly R2 began stomping excitedly. What's wrong now? Luke asked. There are several creatures approaching from the southeast. 3PO informed. Sand people. Just great. Luke grumbled as he grabbed his scanner and a weapon out of the speeder. Come on, let's go have a look. He said as he climbed up onto a rocky outcropping. He zoomed in with his scanner. Well, there are two panthers down there, but I don't see any. Wait a minute, there's one of them now. He said as he spotted one of the creatures. Suddenly one jumped up in front of Luke, roaring fiercely in its native speak. He took his graphy stick and made several swipes at Luke, which he dodged. While evading the creature's lethal blows, Luke was sideswiped in the head by his weapon, knocking him unconscious. The creature dragged him towards the speeder where he and his companions began rummaging through it. Suddenly an eerie noise frightened them away. A figure in a dark brown cloak stepped beside Luke, placing a hand over the boy's forehead to make sure he was okay. Artie watched curiously. The figure removed his head, revealing an older man with a beard. His reddish-brown hair had silvered over time, and he had a few more wrinkles, but mostly Obi-Wan Kenobi hadn't changed much, and that was perhaps due to the fact that his existence hadn't been such a lonely one for the last 18 years. Come here, my little friend, Ben said, as R2 whirled, indicating Luke. He was his master and mistress's offspring, after all. R2 hadn't meant to be such a nuisance to Luke, and had only been following Obi-Wan's specific instructions. Oh, he'll be all right, Obi-Wan replied, with a small, mirthful smile. Especially if his head is as hard as his father's, Obi-Wan thought silently. Rest easy, son. You've had a hard day. Obi-Wan said as he helped Luke sit up. Obi-Wan silently marvelled at how much Luke resembled his father. Ben! Ben Kenobi? Luke asked. Tell me, young Luke, what brings you out this far? He asked. There's the little droid. He's searching for his former master, but I've never seen such devotion in a droid before. He says he belongs to an Obi-Wan Kenobi. Is there any relation to you? Luke asked. Obi-Wan, he mused. I think my Uncle Owen knew him. He says he's dead. Luke replied. Obi-Wan rolled his eyes. Oh, he's not dead. Not yet. Obi-Wan replied. Then you do know him? Luke asked. Well, of course I know him. He's me. Not too many know me by that name anymore. I haven't gone by it much since... Oh, before you were born. Obi-Wan replied. Then this droid does belong to you. Luke said. I don't ever remember owning a droid. Interesting. Obi-Wan replied, as they suddenly heard the cries of the sand people. It wasn't yet time to reveal that this little droid actually belonged to Luke's parents. We had better get indoors. The sand people are easily frightened, but they'll soon return, and in greater numbers. Obi-Wan replied, 3PO! Luke called. They soon found that the Tusken Raiders had ripped the protocol droid apart and scattered his pieces all about. Obi-Wan helped Luke pick up 3PO's pieces and gather them together. Luke flipped a switch on and the droid's eyes lit up. Where am I? I must have taken a bad step. 3PO said, let's get you up. Luke replied, go on without me, Master Luke. I'm done for. 3PO replied pathetically, no, you're not. What kind of talk is that? Luke admonished. With Obi-Wan's help, they carried 3PO back to the older man's small hovel where Luke decided to start putting him back together. But he was about to be surprised, as he soon learned that Obi-Wan didn't inhabit his home alone like a hermit, as his Uncle Owen had always suggested. 
Oh, uh, hello. Oh dear, that's quite the bump you've had on your head. Let me get a cold compress, a woman's voice said. Luke looked up and saw a beautiful blonde-haired woman wearing a simple green house dress with a five-year-old blonde-haired girl in her arms. Go to daddy, sweetheart. She cooed as she handed the child to Obi-Wan. Daddy, who is that? She asked. Obi-Wan smiled as he sat down in a chair and put her on his knee. This is Luke, a new friend. Obi-Wan explained as he looked at Luke, noticing his surprise. Are you surprised? He asked knowingly. I didn't know you had a family. Uncle Owen always made it sound like you lived all alone. Luke replied, Well, your uncle is mistaken about a great many things. Obi-Wan said as the woman returned with a cold compress. There you are, dear, she replied. Thank you, ma'am, he replied graciously. Luke, this is my wife, Satine, and our daughter, Annie, Obi-Wan introduced. Hi, she called, her hazel eyes dancing with laughter. Luke grinned. Hi, he called back pleasantly, as he continued to press the cold compress to his forehead. He set it down and then started helping Obi-Wan sort through 3PO's pieces. Obi-Wan held 3PO's torso up and watched Luke put him back together a piece at a time with no trouble. It reminded him even more of Anakin at that moment. Your father was always really good at fixing things too, Obi-Wan mentioned, watching Luke's head fly up and his eyes widened. You knew my father? He explained. Yes, we both did, though Ben knew him much better than me, Satine added. I first met him when he was just nine years old and watched him grow up. We fought side by side in the Clone Wars, Obi-Wan stated. My father didn't fight in the wars. He was a navigator on a spice freighter. Luke replied, That's what your Uncle Owen taught you, and unfortunately, your Uncle Rex was forbidden to tell you any differently. Ben replied, a little disdain in voice, as Luke heard footsteps. He turned and found his Uncle Rex standing in the entryway. Uncle Rex? What's going on? Luke asked. Patience, young one. You'll soon learn everything, Obi-Wan promised as Rex sat down beside him. Your Uncle Owen doesn't agree with your father's ideals, or your mother's for that matter. He thought your father should have stayed here and not gotten involved. Obi-Wan said, You fought in the Clone Wars with my father too? Luke asked, looking at Rex. He was my commanding general, Rex replied. But my dad would have been really young in the Clone Wars. He was a general? Luke asked. Rex smirked. All the Jedi were. Rex stated, My father was a Jedi and you never told me? Luke exclaimed, Don't be angry at your Uncle Rex. Everything he has kept from you was necessary, and now all will be revealed to you in time, Obi-Wan said cryptically. He really was a Jedi? Luke asked again in disbelief. Oh uh, yes, I was once a Jedi Knight too, right alongside him. In fact, I trained your father myself. Ben revealed, as he suddenly sensed a familiar presence nearby, and he looked at Rex, who nodded gently. It was time. Anakin and Padme were healed. If it was true, then Luke would soon need to know the full truth. I wish I'd known him, Luke said sadly. You will, young Luke. You will, Obi-Wan said silently, as he realised again how much Luke looked like his father. But he has his mother's calm demeanour, Obi-Wan thought. He was the best starfighter in the galaxy, a cunning warrior, and a good friend, Obi-Wan remembered fondly. Rex nodded with a smile. I understand you're becoming quite the pilot yourself, Obi-Wan mentioned. Luke smiled shyly. Oh yeah, and he's just as reckless too, Rex mused. Which reminds me, Obi-Wan said, as he looked at Satine. He retrieved something from a drawer. Obi-Wan rolled the cylindrical object in his hand thoughtfully. Your father would have wanted you to have this when you were old enough, but your Uncle Owen wouldn't allow it, Ben said, as he handed the silver cylindrical weapon to Luke. Your father's lightsaber, the weapon of a Jedi. It is an elegant weapon from a more civilised time. The Jedi Knights were once the guardians of peace and justice, before the dark side. Before the Empire, Obi-Wan said wistfully. How did my father die? 
Luke asked. Obi-Wan, Rex and Satine suddenly all looked very uncomfortable. There are many things about your parents that you don't know, Luke. But I promise that you will learn them all when the time is right. And that time will be very soon. Obi-Wan said as he stood. Rex did as well, and Luke looked towards the entryway again. My parents? Then you knew my mother too? I get the feeling my aunt and uncle knew her too. And you, Uncle Rex. But no one will tell me anything about her. Why? Luke began firing off questions. Patience, young Luke. All will be revealed in time. But right now, we have a visitor. Obi-Wan said, A visitor? Luke asked. He suddenly saw a cloaked figure standing in the entryway of the hovel. The figure lowered his hood, revealing a dark-skinned, bald man. The wrinkles on his face and the fine grey hairs were indications that this man was probably a few years older than Obi-Wan. Hello, Obi-Wan, the man bowed. Master Windu, Obi-Wan bowed back. Milady, he acknowledged to Satine. He also included a curt nod to Rex. Luke, this is Jedi Master Mace Windu, Obi-Wan introduced. It is nice to finally meet you, Luke, Mace said. Luke nodded, still in awe. I assume that since you are here, it means you have news? Obi-Wan said. May smiled. Yes, welcome news. Rebel intelligence indicates that the princess hid the plans for the Death Star in that little asteroid droid. Mace replied. Well then, let's play that recording that he so eagerly wants me to see. Obi-Wan said, as he easily found it, and it began playing. Obi-Wan had to do a double take to make sure he wasn't actually looking at Padme. General Kenobi, years ago you helped my father during the Clone Wars. Now he begs that you help him in his struggles against the Empire. He regrets that he cannot deliver this message to you himself. My ship has fallen under attack, and my mission to bring you to Alderaan has failed. This droid contains vital information against the Empire, and must be delivered to my father on Alderaan. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. The transmission blinked out, and Mace exchanged a long glance with the three of them. Princess Leia is being held prisoner aboard the Death Star, which is in the orbit of Alderaan. You must charter a flight there in order to help her, Mace said. Obi-Wan nodded. And what of the news from Polis Muscle? Obi-Wan asked. Mace allowed himself a small smile. He is healed. At last, Obi-Wan. As is she. They are ready to be awakened. They are waiting for you to arrive there, after you have rescued the princess. I will return to the rebel base. Mace replied. Luke listened to the exchange carefully. Who are they talking about? Luke wondered as he watched Obi-Wan turn to his wife. You need to go with Mace, he told her. I suppose gallivanting to that monstrosity they've built is no place for Annie. But you must promise me that you will be careful. She replied. He nodded. I will. Hope is about to be awakened, and I'm not going to miss it. He promised as they shared a soft kiss. Obi-Wan also gently kissed his daughter's forehead. Your mummy and you are going with Master Windu to visit some friends, but I'll be there to join you soon, he told the little girl. I'll miss you, Daddy, she said. I'll miss you too, he replied, as the teen and Annie were whisked away into Mace's speeder. Come, young Luke, you are to come with us, Obi-Wan said, referring to himself and Rex. But I can't go. I have to get back to the farm. I'm in for it as it is. Luke replied. You cannot go back there, Luke, Rex said as he laid his hand on the boy's shoulder. But why not? Luke asked. There are Imperial Stormtroopers looking for these droids. They have traced them to your aunt and uncle's farm. Mace said. Luke began to panic, but Rex held his shoulders. Not to worry. I got them out before they got there. Your uncle was pretty steamed, but he piped down when I let him see the Imperial Patrol on my scanner. I have seen to it that your aunt and uncle will meet up with Mace, and he will take them to safety. You'll see them soon, Rex said. Luke relaxed a bit. You will come with us, and begin to learn the ways of the Force. Obi-Wan said. The Force? Luke asked. The Force is what gives a Jedi his power. It is an energy field that exists in all living things. Obi-Wan replied. Luke nodded. And, I promise, you will soon learn everything about your parents. Obi-Wan replied. 
With that, they left the hovel and headed for Moss Eisley. In Luke's speeder with the droids. As Rex drove their speeder up to the checkpoint as they entered Moss Eisley, Luke noticed curiously that his uncle Rex had turned his head away from the stormtroopers. Obi-Wan looked at the two helmeted soldiers. They had set up a checkpoint to find the droids. Let's see your identification. Obi-Wan gently waved his hand. You don't need to see our identification. Obi-Wan said. We don't need to see their identification. He parroted. These aren't the droids you're looking for, Obi-Wan said. These aren't the droids we're looking for. He parroted again. Move along, Obi-Wan said. Move along, he parroted, as he allowed them to pass. How did you do that? I thought we were dead, Obi-Wan exclaimed, as Rex parked the speaker outside a particularly seedy cantina. The force can have quite the effect on the weak-minded, Obi-Wan stated simply. Luke wasn't sure what he meant, but he was too distracted by the badly played music coming from inside the establishment. Obi-Wan's tone told him that he would soon learn more about what he meant. Obi-Wan hated places like these, but it was the best place to find the best pilots. After some slight trouble at the bar, Rex and Luke waved over by Obi-Wan, who had been discussing something with a tall Wookiee. It seems I have found us a suitable ship, Obi-Wan said, as the three of them followed the tall Wookiee. A shaggy-haired, slightly rugged-looking young man slouched back in his chair as they sat down at the table. I'm on Solo, captain of the Millennium Falcon. I hear you need passage to the Alderaan system. He said, yes, if it's a fast ship. Obi-Wan replied, Han looked like he had just been insulted. Fast ship? You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? Han asked, should we have? Obi-Wan replied, she's the ship that made the castle run in less than 12 parsecs. She is fast enough for you, old man. Han replied before continuing. What's the cargo? He asked. Passengers only. The two of us, the boy, and the droids. And no questions asked. Obi-Wan replied. Han smiled knowingly. Some kind of local trouble? Han asked. Let's just say we'd like to avoid any Imperial entanglements. Obi-Wan replied. Well, that's the real trick, ain't it? And it's gonna cost you extra. Han insisted. Ten thousand, he stated. Ten thousand? We could almost buy our own ship for that! Luke protested. Yeah, but who's gonna fly it, kid? You? Han asked. You bet I could! I'm not such a bad pilot myself! We don't have to listen to this! Luke said, but Obi-Wan stilled him by putting a hand on his arm. Rex stifled a chuckle. We can pay you two thousand now, plus fifteen when we go to Alderaan. Obi-Wan said. Han's brows were in his hair. Seventeen? He asked in amazement. All right, you got yourself a ship. We'll leave whenever you're ready. Docking Bay 94. Han said. Ninety-four, Obi-Wan repeated, and they left. Seventeen, Chewie! This could really save my neck. Go get the ship ready. Han said. Chewie roared and hurried off. While Luke was getting on the ship, Rex pulled Obi-Wan aside. They've really got Leia? Rex replied. Yes, she's in Vader's captivity. Obi-Wan replied. How the heck did she get away from Ahsoka? Rex asked in exasperation. She is her mother's daughter. Obi-Wan replied simply, having no better answer. Where is Snips now anyway? Rex asked. She is rendezvousing with Satine on Polis Mossa. Mace is dropping her and Annie there before going on to the base with Owen and Baru in tow. We'll see her when we get there. First thing is first, though, we need to get to the Death Star. Leia's life depends on it. Obi-Wan replied. Rex nodded. After dealing with Greedo and Jabba both, Han prepared to take off. The passengers boarded, and by the skin of their teeth, they left the Tatooine atmosphere, escaping the Imperials. Han set the course for Alderaan. This was an easy job to make some fast, easy credits. Little did Han Solo know, but this trip would change his life forever. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. I actually quite enjoy this. It's quite fun as well. Anyway, yeah, nothing much to comment on. You guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, girls and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.